standard. Okay, good evening everyone. I'll call to order the most don't Yeah. I'll call to order the September fifth meeting of the Wilton Town Board. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, roll call. Here. Supervisor Johnson. Here. Councilman Stryker. Here. Councilman Bogardis. Here. Deputy Supervisor Lamb. Here. Councilman McEachran. Excuse. As usual, we, have, we begin with public comment. So, Julia. Uh, first up, uh, Karen James want to talk about the, the Taste of Wilton project. Hi, I'm Karen James, 647 Wilton Gansford Road, Wilton. I just wanted to remind everyone that the second annual Taste of Wilton Farm to Chef event will be held on Sunday, September 22nd from noon to 4 p.m. at Gavin Park. I think it's going to be the first big event of the new pavilion, so we're very excited about that. We have a lot of restaurants and farms participating this year, so we hope you all will come out and support us and support the food pantry. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Eric Rosenberg. Uh, Eric Rosenberg, 16 Pro Lane. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend the right side of the uh, board for uh, coming dressed appropriately this evening in a tie and a coat. Guys are slacking on the dress code. Yeah. Um, anyway, the same for our attendees. Well, listen, at least I have the same color Crocs on. I came to a meeting once and I didn't pay attention. I had two different colored shoes on. We all noticed. What happened? We all noticed. I'm 61 now. Those things start to happen. Uh, two things, one of which was sort of going to be repetitive, but um, with the courthouse, I was hoping that in tonight's um, uh, report that we get a good update on uh, the courthouse and if we're on budget and on time. I'm sure Dwayne's um, got that on his Yeah. Sorry, Blake. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I also again wanted to mention that I was also going to talk about the um, case of Wilton. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if everybody knows, but I, uh, I'm on the board of directors and I also volunteer over there. And uh, it was a great event last year. So um, on the TV to all the residents of Wilton, it's a great event. And please come out and it supports the proceeds support uh, the food pantry. And we actually um, help out uh, hundreds of people every month, including a good number of senior citizens now through the Wilton X Elks Club who do uh, home deliveries to uh, seniors who are homebound. So uh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Dwyer. Nancy Dwyer, 12 New Kent Road. Three things. One, um, Karen just reminded me, uh, Friends of Merle Lake State Park has a, their big nature festival, which is next Saturday. Um, Merle's just right up the road, and that runs from 10 to 3. Huge, huge, thousands of people, family-oriented. Um, second, I'm hoping you can speak to uh, something I found on our homepage, the public hearing that's next month on the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. Um, the town board is a PHA, which is a public housing agency. Um, so I, I pulled information, but if you could just speak at some point tonight, maybe a little, a little bit about what that is. I know the paperwork on it is, I believe, here in the building. Um, somewhere and it might be down the county as well. Um, and also, every month I keep speaking about roads. Um, what is our master plan? Um, we had a report done by Cornell. Um, my streets 
that I've had uh, people complain about um, safety uh, moving about. We have people in wheelchairs, we have little tiny chick kids, um, and I had a resident complain about the quality of our roads, uh, which prompted me to check into what our um, master plan is. I'm not sure whether the town board handles that or our highway department handles that. Um, I had a request in there and haven't gotten any um, reply as to what the master plan is per the 2016 report from Cornell that listed out all of our roads, all the projected needs over a 10 year period from 2016, keeping to the 800 to $900,000 budget for road improvements that our uh, highway department had. Um, and I have yet to be able to get any kind of response on whether or not we're keeping to that. They went over in detail every single road, every single crack that needed to be done, how to handle it, um, and I, I'm not getting anywhere. I don't really know where to go uh, for that. Thanks. Um, just, I think on the on the HUD thing, I think Maria can speak to that. They're, they're the ones that administer our Section 8 housing, uh, so you, maybe you can right. answer that question. Absolutely. So James Mastriani is the administrator for our public housing. So the town of Wilton doesn't really have any, nor does the board, have any administrative um, duties or functions with relation to the housing in the town of Wilton for the people who would be filling the units. <coughs> that is Mikey Mastriani. Mastriani is in charge of obtaining funding from HUD. We are simply a pass-through. So while we are a pass-through, we are going to have Mastriani here, um, either the president or one of his officers here at the public hearing to kind of talk about the program more in detail, to answer any questions that you may have um, related to the program as well. And the paperwork uh, describing that whole thing, they put together and it's here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you have to foil it or can you just come in and ask to see it? You know? You can ask to see it. And, and also it should be on the web by now. If it's not, I'll make sure that it is. Okay. Because the, the link that um, announced the public hearing did not have a link to that paperwork. It said it would be available. And I could be here. County building, both places, I don't know. I did notice when I looked on the chart of all of the um, PHAs, which are the agencies, a lot of towns are named that. However, a lot of attorneys' offices are handling um, that. Might be, yeah, that might be the way that those towns are handling their, um, their public housing. No, I'm just saying, I know it's a guide for a highway. We don't even so master and the federal government. Oh, no. Yes, it's a federally funded program. Right. Um, so they're not a, a law agency? They're, no. It's not. Okay. So, so as long as that's just, can I just ask another question? Um, usually when there's a public hearing, it's because the, the board or some agency is going to vote on something. Uh, it sounds like really nobody has any say here. So I'm just curious as what is the purpose of having a, a public hearing in that case? So the federal requirement, and okay. Mastriani is asking our board to accept the document, which is the application for the, uh, it's a five-year document, so every five years it's a process that we have to go through in order to continue to have a program in effect to receive the vote. So the board will will be voting to accept whatever it is being put before. Correct. Okay, thank you. And just on the roads, Kirk, Kirk decides the road's going to be paid and it's budget time and he'll be submitting that to the town town board this month so we'll know what roads will be. Is there a list then at budget time that comes in as yes. which roads are part of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Will that get put on the website? Um, I think it's, it's not actually on. I have to be honest with you, this is my first budget cycle, so I don't know if it's ever been publicized prior to the budget actually happening and, and being accepted or if at all. Um, not that it's a bad thing. It's, it's been on the website. It just okay. wasn't updated um, um, recently um, after I got asked about our roads and called and said, is there a process by which roads are determined to need or get on the agenda to be done and was basically told, well, you know, if there's an issue, let us know. 
Yeah, that's the highway superintendent's call. I mean, they submit it to us. He submits to us for funding, and that's um, okay. that's our so role. The town board doesn't do anything. Regarding we don't determine why. That's up to the highway okay. superintendent. And the Cornell Cornell Road study. That's basically a guide that they provided for us. So, but I don't, I don't think I'm sure Kirk will. I mean, it's, it's, we're not trying to be secret. We'll, we'll let you know what roads are on there. Uh, I just wasn't sure what the, which governing body dealt with that and who had control over what roads were going to be done, not done, no. we only, it, not posting it. We only control the funding. Highway superintendent pretty much controls everything when it comes to roads. Okay. Is there is there a though a list of plan of like which roads are scheduled to be done in which years? Um, we do have that, that Cornell study, but that's still up to the highway superintendent to either follow it or modify it the way he sees fit. So. But since he's here, is there have you scheduled out at least short term or mid term which roads are actually going to be done in which years? I really don't want to get involved in public discussion, but I will explain one issue. Our town engineer works with me. He's a professional. I think I'm a professional after 30 years. Our town board is involved in some of the discussions. We go out and analyze. Mr. Dwyer is talking about a study that was done by Cornell that is only a study. It is not a fixed document. So we look at that and then we have to prioritize what we feel is a priority concerning the roads that need to be fixed within the town of Milton. I have never been approached. Kings Mills is where Mr. Dwyer lives. I've never been approached by anybody in there with potholes or anything that is a hazard to the public in this town, period. Are we doing subdivisions? Yes, we are. Next year, I'm doing three complete subdivisions. Our engineer will know what we're doing, and we'll go and do whatever we can do with the money the town board gives us to work with. I'm not really looking to have a discussion. I'm just wondering if the highway department has sort of looked two or three years down the road and said, here's the plan. I guess it's really a yes or no answer. Is there a, a, a plan or is it just year, literally year by year? Yes, there is a plan. It's a guide to go by, but it's not written in stone. And we analyze that plan. We pick and choose what we think is priority out of that plan. The roads, the deterioration of roads can change from year to year. So, I mean, we, we leave it up. We have the faith in Kirk to decide what roads needs to be done within the funds that we provide him. That's, that's but, again, but he does have a plan. But so. it is determined, though, year by year. He, he doesn't go ahead and say, okay, based on whatever information we have, uh, these are the roads we anticipate doing uh, in 2020, and then these are the roads we anticipate. Yeah. I mean, there's always, you know, roads expected to last 10, 15 years. So, I mean, th there is a plan. Some, sometimes they last, sometimes they don't. So you got to modify as things happen. So. But we rely totally on Kirk for that, and uh, he's he's done a great job over the years. So. And there's the so. I can tell Lori and said that was the process when I'm um, submitting an uh, issue with these people based on what the message that was expressed to me. Yeah. There it is. So anyway, uh, um. It's, it's in the public comment. It got a little bit more than in public comment, but that's good. It's good discussion. So um, the next item is uh, uh, the minutes from our uh, August meeting. The motion to approve the minutes. I'll put forth the motion to approve <coughs> the minutes for August. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. And opposed. Motion carried. Community development block grant. Um, you know what this is is Saratoga County now has a population that it qualifies to be a they call it urban county, um, which would make it eligible for community block development uh, grants, which would include opportunities for funding for affordable housing. Um, job uh, retention of businesses, expansion of community services, neighborhood revitalization projects, and a lot of these programs are, are geared toward low or moderate um, income uh, families. 
but uh, to be part of the county wants to be part of this and be an eligible county um, it needs the cooperation of all the municipalities to at least have a population uh, of the towns over 200,000 in order to be eligible um, so what this um, resolution is doing is that the town would want to be included so that we would be eligible for some of these grants and have to make the county would be eligible for these uh, types of funding so, um, that's what the resolution is about um, you have that you have the template before you okay. but that's the sum and summary of it is to be included so that the, the town could access the, first of all as the county would be an eligible urban county and, and be entitled to some of these funds and then secondly if they're they're approved the town will, will be eligible for some of these grants as well. All right, I'll put forth a motion, a resolution authorizing the town of Wilton to join Saratoga County as part of an entitled urban county under the Community Development Block Program and authorizing the supervisor to execute all required cooperation agreements in connection therewith. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or discussion on it? I think it's a good oh. program and you know, hopefully make some uh, funds available to the town. So, okay, there's no questions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Uh, next is uh, open space, uh, acceptance of open space in the forest road project. Ryan, you want to take this? Well, Joe Daniel from EDP is here. So he's going to do a presentation on the plans. He's got a map that will show the lands. So the town board has already put forth a motion in the intent to accept the lands this project needs to get started. So uh, this project is getting near completion. So the board is being asked to do the final acceptance of the land. There are some additional lands that were purchased by the developer. This is for like the trails and those that, that yeah, the trails, the open space, basically the lands that are shown in blue and green and all that go. <coughs> so uh, yeah, good evening. Um show the animal environmental design on the behalf of Forest Road LLC of El Monte Builders. What we are looking at is the Forest Road subdivision. We had presented this back to the town board probably almost a year ago now, or uh, six, eight months ago, uh, for offering the dedication of everything you see in blue and green. Uh, two different types of open space, green open space being completely unrestricted, dedicated to the town, develop soccer fields, parks, pavilions, whatever amenities that the town deems appropriate and fit within those areas. And then we have the blue area, excluding this is the deep restricted open space, which is, excuse me, to be dedicated for passive recreational use. Uh, and the intent being that that stays as a wooded area with trails, maybe some fitness trails, uh, things of that nature. Um, since in the, in the board was on board with that uh, at that time. As we've moved forward with the project, there was a small 14 lot subdivision known as Cahill Forest immediately adjacent. I believe some land uh, was offered for dedication as part of that subdivision and the town did actually accept that land recently. What we have done, and we've been through the planning board and we just received a, um, uh, a new approval for the project, is we purchased this land, those lots, incorporated in them into our existing road network, eliminating the 12, 1300 feet of road that was gonna be dedicated to the town, did not extend our roads, actually shortened our roads a little bit. So we have the same amount of lots, less road, which is a great benefit for the town, easier to maintain. And now all of this land here, that is adjacent to the north way, and for the most part, wooded and maturely wooded, um, is now being offered as part of the open space dedicate open space dedication associated with the rest of the Forest Grove community. Uh, in total, we're looking to dedicate uh, about 360 acres of land, which would also tie into this orange area, which is 40 acres of land that the town uh, already owns. Um, so with that being said, we're looking at close to 400 acres of parkland um, in this area of Wilton with a, a developed trail system. Um, so we're here tonight, we're just looking for the, the town to 
um, accept the intent that when it comes time to donate this land as we move this project forward into the uh, final phases that the board will and has the desire to accept dedication of this property. Didn't we, we had done something with that before, right? Right, there was an intent to accept the land. Right, you, you, you passed the resolution expressing a favorable intent without binding or committing the town board to doing so. All right, so, so this would be a commitment that to do that with the additional land that then. was recently purchased and added in the so you're not going to build on the additional land. So the 16 houses or whatever that was initially scheduled by the previous contractor is not going to be developed then? They are going to be incorporated into... They're going to be moved from here to there. Correct. This okay. is going to remain woods. We are proposing a um, uh, 10 to 12 uh, lot space parking lot right. that would provide trailhead access to the seven or so miles of trails being proposed. So residents of the town of Wilton can go on Heron Lane, park there. We also have a trailhead access up on Scout Road. Because initially, previous to you acquiring that land, we did not have trails going across that property. So we gained more trail system. Correct. That's what I thought. Thank you. It was, does that still give the emergency squad the opportunity if they need space the behind? Squad already, uh, the town ruined dedicated that land to the emergency squad mm -hmm. already, so they, uh, they had that land yep. if they wanted. So okay. Right. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Everything looks good in your, in your aspect, and the planning board thought this was good. The planning board is, uh, passed a recommendation yes. to the town board. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just want to let people know that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So, would someone like to move to? Yeah, I'll make the motion. Accept the open space as presented. Yeah. I make a motion to accept the land dedicated from the Monte Builders as depicted on the community master plan for the Forest Grove subdivision, contingent upon review and approval from the town council and town engineer. Second. Motion and second. Any questions or further discussion on it? Great plan. Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Any opposed? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is uh, reappointment on the uh, Board of Assessment Review. Um, Carol Green has been on that for a while. Um, her term is up. Her reappointment would take effect September, or October 1st and run through uh, September 30th, uh, 2024. Tina, you work with Carol. Are you uh, happy with her? What was that? Carol, with Carol Green. You, you work with, with Carol yes. on the board and you're, you're yeah. happy with her. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. I'm very happy. I think Mrs. Green has always done a great job, not just that, but for the town. I, I, I make a motion to appoint her. I'll second that motion. I have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So move. All right, moving on to um, committee reports. Oh. Um, Say something, or uh, yeah, on, on that agenda item, or yep, under number seven. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was a little disappointed to not see our assessor's position, which is up for appointment as well. Um, that uh, Tina sits in, who was our um, assistant or assistant assessor um, prior to that, for probably more than ten years. I served this town for over twenty years in that job was posted when our last one, our last assessor vacated. Um, Tina applied. She's, my understanding, completely certified, licensed, whatever you want to call it. Um, people came into the town board meeting at that time to speak on her behalf. Um, I've been in front of our independent board of assessment review in the past. They have all indicated um, that they love Tina. Um, she's fabulous. Um, I know residents that absolutely love her, have had amazing interactions with her um, after her appointment. It was right in the middle of, of the busiest time of the year for assessor's offices, and I recall being here for meetings and Tina working 
many, many, many hours for this town to make sure that that whole time period went as smoothly as possible and things were taken care of the way they should have been. Um, and that appointment was up for renewal today. And I'm a little disappointed, to say the least, uh, to not see it on there and to find out, as I was on the website this past weekend, that the job was posted again um, last week, one week prior to when she should have been reappointed, um, when she was away. So uh, I just wanted to make sure to say that. Yeah, just a, just an explanation on that you know, our policy is when when there's an opening or a vacancy, um, we advertise or post the job, and that's what we did. Um, it should have been posted a month ago. That's my fault. I I, for, I forgot about it, so um, it wasn't posted till or advertised till last last week. So it would be difficult to make the appointment. Um, in September, so. Um, well, two two things to that though. We have you have appointed people in the past, particularly the past assessor, uh, without posting it, and four months prior to the actual re vote reappointment. And um, another concern I have is why you have it posted until December sixth, which is the day after the last town board meeting of this year, which is the last town board meeting of the current city board members. Yeah, so I, I don't really understand why it has to go out yeah. that long. Well, I'm just going to explain that, but I don't want to get into it. The, the, we ch I wanted, I had Nancy Riley check with the state about whether we had to appoint by October 1st. Mm -hmm. and the state said no, who's ever in that position would be a holdover until you make the appointment. They said you just should appoint by the end of the year. So. Nancy just put that date on there. Obviously, we're not going to go take that long. It's, I would assume we will modify that to a, a week or two from now. So it's, it's you know, it's not, nothing to be get excited about. It was just um, a, a date put on there. So, well, uh, and that's you know, that's so that's administrative stuff. And you know, I'm not going to talk anymore. I know that's fine. I'm just expressing my disappointment. I didn't know all that had transpired. There are circumstances that it didn't get on the agenda tonight, primarily because of my fault because I didn't I didn't advertise it a month ago when it should have been. Well, and, and I, I can't imagine someone being more qualified. That's and people have stood up and spoke. So no one's questioning Tina's qualification. Thank you. Committee reports. I know Dwayne has one. Make it good, Dwayne. You know, Eric, I don't disappoint me. You know, Eric, I hate to let you down today. Uh, I do have to apologize. I've been on vacation for two weeks. I just got back this past weekend. Uh, I did miss the planning, uh, the update committee meeting for the court. Uh, but I have been in contact with the various people who are involved in the committee. Uh, the core project, as you see, um, from the outside, it doesn't look like it's making great progression. Um, me standing there as a third person looking at it didn't look like we made a lot of progress. <coughs> but um, there's internal work and stuff that's going on that you don't see from the exterior that they're actually kind of completing. Um, my understanding is with, by October, what is this? this is September, by October 1st, we should gr see great leaps and bounds of progress on the court building. I was told by October 1st, MJ uh, Design is um, pushing the current contractors. Uh, we have a set date that we want completion. Um, MJ, MJ Design is, is on them and, and riding them to make sure that our completion date is is met. We have a goal as to what date we want that done. I believe it was middle to the end of October. Um, we were told by October 1st we will see great progress from the outside. Um, again, there's a lot of infrastructure on the inside that we don't see um, metal framing and stuff like that, so roof supports. We have had some changes um, uh, in consultation with the employees of the court. We changed small windows that were kind of like this style we have here to a higher window but longer to allow more light and more security reasons. Again, being a court building, a legal, uh, a judicial building like that, we are concerned about uh, security there. Um, so we've gone to a different window design uh, in the offices to make it more secure for the employees, but again, allowing more natural light and less lighting. Um, we have some 
we are having to construct bathrooms for prisoners, which falls into a different realm than community bathrooms. So there's a little bit more work to be done in that with concrete work and, and, and plumbing and stuff. So they are making on the inside, you know, it's doing real well. On the outside, it looks like it's not progressing well. Um, I've raised some concerns saying, geez, it doesn't look like they're doing, they're doing much, but then I'm walking on the inside, they actually are doing stuff. Um, so the exterior of the building, we are guaranteed that will be done, and I use that in quotes, uh, by the end of October, but great progress by the 1st of October. Is there a provision in the contract that if they don't make their deadlines, there's a, there's a, a lot of times there's a penalty in the contract? We, we do have one, yes. Uh, again, we're kind of soft on it a little bit right now because of the weather. We've had some, obviously, a lot of rain and restrictions, uh, but we do have penalties built in, uh, and the current contractor is aware of it. MJ Design is enforcing deadlines. Um, whether they put more men on the job or not uh, is depends on what's required. Um, again, I don't get into the runnings or the intricacy of the uh, contractor people. I just go to meetings and I, I do spot inspections. But to your knowledge, we're, are we on budget? Are we close to on time? Again, we are on budget. Um, actually, my understanding is we're kind of under budget. Uh, we've had some, made some additions, obviously, to the windows, structures, and stuff like that, which will change the budget a little bit. But my understanding is, and in, in, in the comptroller can control, uh, correct me, but my understanding is that we're looking that we possibly might be able to come under budget, which is obviously great for all of us. Um, so pretty much that's the core building. The pavilion is going to be ready for the Town of Wilton uh, Festival, or what is it? Taste, Taste, of, Taste, of, Taste of Wilton. Of Wilton. And uh, our salt screens, uh, the highway department, uh, they're working on it. We had a little bit of a communication issue with one contractor. Uh, we've gone to a different vendor. Um, uh, the salt screens, if you not know, it's we were dump salt into the trucks that filters it and doesn't clog the trucks up. It's kind of a, a project that no one really knows about except for really highway and engineering. Uh, but that salt screen project has been, I've been told, will be ready and in place by um, the weather when we need it. So, and that's my committee reports. Great. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Supervisor, have you got the dates with the recycling pickup? I don't have nothing. Yeah. I, I All right. You going to bring that up? Cover that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Steve, you got anything? No. no. Okay. Just uh, a, a couple of things. Um, on Saturday, the 28th, um, the town has its bulk waste uh, disposal day, which will take place on, the, on Saturday the 28th from 8 to 1 o'clock at two, two locations, here at, at the highway garage and also uh, uh, at, at Gavin Park. Um, you have to be a town resident and have um, proof of residency, probably driver's license. And we will have staff there to, to, to uh, check on that. Uh, on the website, and there are some flyers out here, the items that are being, um, that they, they will ex accept and what they uh, won't accept. But it's, it's usually, it's most of it is, is bulk stuff, furniture, appliances, those types of uh, things, bicycles, lawnmowers, anything of, of stuff you want to get you want to get rid of you just drive up here the, the uh, county waste will be here and they'll have uh, staff to help take it out of the truck and, and that that for you um and there'll be signs of where you could direct you to uh, where that will be at both uh, uh, gavin park uh, and here as an alternative, if um, there are items that they don't accept, um, I just want to mention the Saratoga Recycling Day by, is, uh, by Sustainable Saratoga. Um, is on the Saturday, October 26th from 9 to 2 at the SPAC parking lot. They take items that's like electronics that's not being available to take take here. There is a charge for electronics, but there are other things they take that the the Wilton Day, um, Wilton, Wilton Disposal Day, which is free, um, won't, won't accept. But uh, so there is a five dollar charge uh, per car at, at this back site, uh, and twenty dollars for. Uh, Electronics. So there's so there's two options, and their website, which also would indicate what items are on there, is um, Sar uh, sustainablesaratoga.org/project. So, and uh, 
And of course, the Wilton disposal day is on our town town website. So I do I do have one item real quickly. With do you want to have questions about the recycling? Well, if you're allowing questions. Are, is the town paying for this, or are they paying the town, or else is... No, the town's paying them to do this. Very nice. Can I ask how much? Um, 5000 I was going to ask the same thing, because I see on the budget you, you stuff that you actually have a recycling um, line item. That money has been taken from for other things. So it's, we still have the money there to this. I, I think it's great to be doing this. Um, uh, and, and for Sergeant to be pushing out there as well, uh, it's nice. But I, was, I saw the budget move over out of recycles. Recycling? That's a very good question, Nancy. So last year when the budget was developed, it was developed with the uh, intent that there would be a different modality of recycling. Then when we looked at the um, <coughs> possibilities this year, we determined that we go a different mode, which is this bulk disposal day. So it was far less expensive the way that we chose to do it this year. So there was a lot of leftover lines out, but there was some leftover money that we were able to reallocate to other programs that we need. So we're still able to, you know, achieve the desired intent, which is to do the recycling, but at a much yeah, originally that was supposed to be you put it out in the front of your house and they were going to come by and pick up all this stuff. And that was just too expensive to do. Um, the one item I had uh, was, was Gavin. Another was, question? Or no? I think that was it too. Uh, okay. Down at Gavin Park right now is our most popular. Uh, um, yeah. Most popular thing is junior NBA basketball. The signups are going on right now. Uh, tell people if they're interested in basketball, this is the time to sign up. It's a great program. Uh, it's very popular, and it's like I said, it's Gavin Park's most popular uh, uh, sport down there. So, filling up quick. So please uh, sign up right away. Thank you. Okay. So the committee reports. So we'll go to Maria <coughs> and uh, controller's report. Okay. The first two items are the budget amendments and the <coughs> interior design for the court building. Um, so if the board has any questions. This is based on an estimate um, when we met about a month or two ago to determine what our interior uh, would encompass. Things like tile, carpeting, sheetrock, bathrooms, LED fixtures, and so forth. The most expensive piece being the tile. We came up with an estimated number, and of course, if this is too much, then it could be transferred to another capital project or back to the general fund. Okay. Any questions for me on the. Um Budget amendments. Mark, can I ask a question just real quick? Promise. Uh, since these are budget amendments, were these things not in the original budget? That is correct. Yes. So at the time the original budget was adopted for 2019, back last year around this time, we did not have the information that we needed in order to create a budget for the court building. Okay, because I know there was a whole discussion several months back about the budget and the new courthouse and the and the, the other new courthouse and so this is I mean this is a million dollars worth of items that were not budgeted. It is five hundred thousand dollars. It represents oh, okay. five hundred thousand dollar extract from the general fund and then another five hundred the same five hundred thousand dollar transfer to the capital project. So it's the same five hundred thousand dollars that's coming out of the general fund and being transferred to the capital project fund. That's why you see it on two lines. And um, when the budget for 2019 was developed last year in October, yeah. we didn't know the scope of the project. We didn't know how much it was going to cost. We hadn't gone out to bid yet. There was just not enough information. So now that we were at the point where we can actually do the project, we have the numbers in the yeah. so To the extent that there was a whole debate up there about the budget and being too much or too little, this is even $500,000 more. No. 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 Um, well, I just, I'm just no. trying to understand. No. Because it says amendment, so. Right, amendment from the 2019 budget that was adopted in October, or November 1st, actually, of 2018. So at that time, we didn't know that we were going to have enough information. We didn't have the information. Right. 
in order to actually have some solid numbers with which to budget. So there was nothing budgeted in 2019 yet. So this represents the money that we're spending for the interior. Um, a couple of months ago, we had the exterior based on the fact that we had um, accepted the bid, we accepted the bid from themselves, so we knew how much the exterior would be. So we put that in the budget at that time. Now we have the interior commission. So is this part of the, the original project budget? Yeah. yeah, it was part of the original It's just concept. a matter of which year we're paying yes, it. Yes, okay. yes. That's yes. what I wanted. I see it is coming from, from fund balance. Correct. Yes. It's not. It's, it's not actually. No, no, I, I understand now. I just. I just wanted to know if this <coughs> was part of the original project budget, and just a matter of which year we're paying it, in versus oh, we had cost overruns and we need another five hundred thousand dollars. No, no. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I'm sorry. I'll just quickly do that. Why an amendment versus a transfer? It looks like any time that you are taking money from fund balance or you're raising additional revenue from another source, it has to be an amendment. That's just how long. Okay. Okay, so, so motion to approve the uh, budget amendments? I make a motion that we approve the uh, budget amendments one and two. I second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 opposed? Mm -hmm. So move. Uh, transfers? Okay, the next batch of five items are a typical budget transfer request in terms of these are items that are uh, needing to be paid, so we're finding sources that already exist in our budget and just reallocating that source to another aspect. So that we can Questions of Maria? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve the uh, transfers? I put forth a motion to approve the 2019 budget transfers. I'll okay. second. Mm -hmm. Motion a and a second. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So the next section is the personnel section. And I think I would take it item by item because there's so many of them this, this month. Um, so for item A, uh, Kirk Woodcock, our highway superintendent, is requesting that the town board approve the following personnel changes to move John Phillips from the MEO position to the vacant mechanic position at the step two rate of 2437. And then Jake Strong was moved from his position of the maintenance mechanic at the rate of 1997 to the vacant position of MEO at the base rate of 1837. Okay. Um, motion to approve Kirk's request. I put forth the motion to approve Kirk's, uh, Sup Superintendent Kirkland Woodcock's request. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. So moved. So the next item is that the town board is requested to approve that Jamie Nolan fill the vacant school crossing guard position at the rate of 1575. I make a motion to approve Jamie Nolan to the crossing guard uh, position. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So move. So Sherry Burke Holden uh, of the Port Department had requested to be able to carry over a small amount of vacation hours um, beyond her anniversary date. Um, she has a specific reason for that. It's a necessary reason, and it's not for an indefinite period of time. So with that information that the board was given, uh, the board is requested to ratify its decision to accept her request. I make a motion that Sherry Worth hold and carry your time over. I'll second that. Okay, a motion and a second. Any questions? No. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So move. Sue Baldwin, the town clerk, is requesting overnight travel to New York State Town Clerk Association Regional Meeting in Saranac Lake on September 22nd. And the board is requested to approve that because it is overnight travel. I put forth the motion that we allow Susan Baldwin, town clerk, uh, to go to New York State Town Clerk Association regional meeting at Saranac Lake on September 22nd. Second. Second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. So moved. 
and the last item is other and the town board is requested to ratify its decision to waive the signage permit fee for the replacement of a sign for the operation of dr soldier i make a motion to waive the fee for the sign for dr soldier i'll second it yeah just a, a for information purposes, uh, Dr. Soldier has found a new home in the old um, Feral Oil. Uh, Feral Oil. Feral Oil. Feral Oil. Feral Oil. Feral Oil. Um, John, do you know whether... They don't know anything yet. Um, but at least for now, they'll be operating out of there and be able to function uh, and uh, hopefully get all packages replaced yeah. and sent to our troops. And if anybody can help them, they are they are looking for some funds. Yeah. They I think do they a great they have job. One of those GoMe funds. Uh, I think so. GoFundMe. Yeah. GoFundMe. One of them. So <coughs> anyway, so we have a motion, a second. All in favor of waiving those fees? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Um. That concludes the agenda. Is there any other topics or items you want to talk about? I'd like to make a motion that uh, we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Dwayne, ever, ever. I seriously never, ever. I know. I always will when I walk down. It's good to be freezing their asses. It's on the grill. Well, the only issue I have no, it's a nice, nice, nice conversation on the phone. Yeah. 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 That's pretty much doesn't know.